Today we will discuss about packaging of DNA in molecular genetics in chapter 5 unit 2. We have discussed in the, in the molecular genetics about the DNA and RNA. So DNA is the genetic material in most of the organism. Only in some organism RNA is the genetic material. And how this DNA is packed in the chromosome. So you can see the double helix structure of DNA. And you can see the coiling too. That coiling is packed in this chromosomes. So we will be seeing in detail. Packaging of DNA helix. So the distance between two consecutive base pairs. So you can see, you, you can think this one base pair and this one base pair. The distance between these two base pair is 0.34 nanometer. And it can be written as 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus m of the DNA double helix in a typical mammalian cell. So it is a typical mammalian cell. So which is, it is the mammalian cell. We can see the double helix model. Look at the double helix model, model that is the base pair is 0.34 nanometer which is equal to 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter. How you can calculate the base pairs? So the total number of base pair is multiplied with the distance between two consecutive base pairs. So 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of 9 into 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per base pair. The length of the DNA double helix is approximately 2.2 meter. So the base pair is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of 9 into 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per base pair. So the length of the double D helix DNA model is 2.2 meter. Okay. The total length of the double helical DNA is equal to total number of base pairs into the distance between two consecutive base pairs. So the length of the double helix DNA is calculated as total number of base pair into distance between two consecutive base pairs. So the length of E. coli DNA. So the length of E. coli DNA is 1.36 meter. And the number of base pair in E. coli is 4 into 10 to the power of 6 base pair. So it can be written as 1.36 into 10 to the power of 3 meter by 0 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9. That is the constant you can divide and you will get the answer. Okay. So that you can find out the length of the E. coli. So the length of the DNA double helix is far greater. That is it is more greater than the dimension that is the dimension of the mm, mammalian nucleus so it is more larger than the nucleus mammalian means the mammal's nucleus 10 to the power of minus 6 approximately the length of the dna is 10 to the power of minus 6 meter and you all know the chromosomes are the carrier of the genes and they carry the characters from one generation to another generation. This we have discussed in botany, gen classical genetics and in zoology, the molecular genetics we have, we are discussing now. So we all know the chromosome carries the gen characters from one generation to another generation. Dupro in 1965, single cell standard, that is single standard model of unineum. That is, it is long coiled one with histone proteins in eukaryotes. So, long coiled one with histone proteins in eukaryotes. So, in eukaryotes, it is a long coiled one, okay, with histone proteins. We will talk about histones. What is histones? And the plants and animals are more DNA. That is, the plants and animals have more DNA compared to the bacterial cell. Because the bacterial cell DNA is circular, but the eukaryotic, that is the plants and animals are higher, on, higher organisms, they have the linear DNA material, okay. So, they have more compared to bacteria. How they fit into the cell nucleus? So, first we will see the prokaryotes. Pro means primitive, first formed. Karyos means nucleus. 
So first form the nucleus, no well developed organelles like mitochondria, chloroplast, Golgi apparatus etc. These are absent in prokaryotes and their genetic material is circular. So circular and there is no nuclear membrane. It looks like a nucleoid. Okay, it looks like a nucleoid and this nucleoid or get that is the nucleoid condition doesn't have chromatin. So they may be called as genophore. Next, next the eukaryotes. U means true nucleus, well developed organelles like mitochondria, chloroplast, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum. These are present in the cell that is called eukaryotes and in eukaryotes we will see the chromatin. So in the chromatin you have a seed, I have given a string, this is a string with beads okay like this now and you have to compare with the chromatin you think this as a chromatin on that you have a repeated subunits called nucleosomes so how it looks like means when you take a photograph of it through a microscope electron microscope you can see a string or a string contains beads so like this only so this is the string and this is the beads and, and technically we will see means the string is chromatin and the bead is nucleosomes. Who termed that, that is who had given this model means Kernberg proposed the model for nucleosome. So they may ask him one mark. Kernberg proposed the model for nucleosomes. So this is the nucleosome structure they have given one. Okay, and you can see this nucleosome has histone proteins. There are five types. In that, in the center core, this is the center core, you have H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Two molecules each. Okay, and they are present in the center core. And they are positively charged. And you can see this green, uh, green which is wrapping through the nucleosome is the DNA. Because DNA is negatively charged, so easily both are attracted, attracted, and just and here one nucleo, nucleosome, and here also you have one nucleosome. There is a gap between for these two nucleosomes. No, that DNA is called linker DNA. In the linker DNA, you have H1 protein. That is H1 is histone. So normally this histone is are called basic proteins. So basic proteins and they are more rich in lysine and arginine. So they are rich in lysine and arginine. Okay. So they, the nucleosomes are the repeating subunits. Which where it is present? It is present on the chromatin. And in the center portion you have the histones. There are five histones. The four are in the center position and one is in the linker DNA. And these histones are made up of basic proteins known as lysine and arginine. They may ask this question in your need as well as in your one mark. So and they can ask to do diagram of nucleosomes in three mark question. Only the diagram and the parts. This diagram. The parts you do means you will get. Okay. So next we move on to the main part. So, the nucleosome model was coined by, the nucleosome term was coined by Audet. Okay. And the nucleosome, as I said, the repeated structure that is, as I said in the beginning, no. So, this is a repeated structure on the chromatin, which looks like a beads on the string. So, that is called nucleosomes. So the chromatin is a thread like bodies seen in nucleus. So this chromatin, this is a string, no? This like that uh, you can see here also. So you can see the chromatin, this portion, this chromatin is a thread like structure. So the chromatin is a thread like structure. Where it is seen? We are talking about the nucleus. So it is seen in the nucleus. So the nucleus as I say, okay, in the nucleus. Now we see with the nucleosomes. So as I say, there are five histone proteins. They are the basic one which contains lysine and 
arginine okay rich in lysine and arginine in the center portion this is the center portion you have h2a h2b uh, h3 h4 and at the side you have h1 the histone okay and they are present in pairs that is in the center you have eight eight means all in two that is two pairs h2a h2b h3 h4 in two pairs means how many are there here octomere okay for two sa eight so in octomere condition they are present in the center in octomere condition they are present in center okay so you can see here the histone octomere they, they are present in pair and this as i talk about this dna is negative charge but this histone protein this nucleosome is positive charge so opposite signs will attract the positive and negative charge particle here the positive one is histone protein that is the nucleosomes and the negative one is dna so due to this the dna is wrapping you can see the wrapping condition so like this it is wrapping no that wrapping takes place due to the negativity of the dna and positivity of the nucleosomes and the dna here okay the dna this dna no this dna has 200 base pairs 200 base pairs in a turn in a single turn the dna has 200 base pairs okay next the histone are positively charged and how many as i said how many five types are there and they are two rich and that is that i had said no lysine and arginine are the protein seen in histones and in the center core you have four histone h2a h2b h3 h4 and the linker dna that is connecting the adjacent nucleotide so here that is the h1 is here and here one nucleosome so the linking that is the linking connecting the h1 that is linker dna so the linker dna and the bead on the string it is coiled chemically it is coiled so you can see so this structure it is chemically coiled no that is called solenoid they may ask in two mark what is solenoid so the chemically the chemically coiled structure is solenoid solenoid chemically so coiled structure is called solenoid and pairs solenoid you have six nucleosomes in a solenoid you have six nucleosomes per term for one term you have six nucleosomes and the chromatin fibers are very much condensed so they are coiled and they are tightly packed uh, packed and form chromatids to form chromosomes so the chromatin fibers where the nucleosomes in for one term it is six so like that it is coiled tightly and packed in the chromatids in the form of chromosomes and the packaging of chromosomes is high level so the packaging is high level so additional set of proteins are required for this packaging so that is called non histone chromosomal proteins so this protein is required for highly coiling nhc so non histone chromosomal protein so the packaging of chromatin at higher level requires additional set of protein called non histone chromosomal protein nhc and in chromatin you have two types of chromatin u chromatin and heterochromatin so u chromatin is loosely packed if you put a strain coloring on the chromatin u chromatin it is lighter in color and it is active with the charge particles that is it takes place through transcription and translation process is too active heterochromatin densely means tightly packed opposite to the 
loosely packed tightly packed and the stain is darker in color and it is inactive in transcription process so if if they ask about the packaging of helix dna helix in eukaryotes means you have to talk about the nucleosomes how it is arranged and how it is packed and what are the things are required how many proteins are taken place what is chromatin and what are the types of chromatin what it is used that is nhc these things and all you write it in five marks means with the help of diagram surely you get five marks so thank you for watching the video if you have any doubts post your doubts in the comment box Give a thumbs up, share and subscribe to Science Easy Tech channel.